This is Hanya Travels, and today this is the first information session on the topic of that's everyone's favorite marriage. Is a blog and a YouTube channel which features reviews, information sessions, recipes, unboxing books, and a lot more, and including a series as well, which you could check it out. That's called A David Cousin on uh, Hanya Travels YouTube channel. And also, there's a lot of recipes, a lot of trendy uh, food that is on that is for that is always being reviewed on Honey Travel. So read and watch Honey Travels. According to Government of Canada, is a union between two people uh, that are that have legalized and that has formed under the ritual, under religious, and under civil act that they are married. of from the Canadian Institute of uh, Marriage and Family is that it is very similar that is a union between two people by civil legal and religious and all acts which is uh, which is where they're united and to be uh, partners under under the law I want to talk about types of marriages is nuclear family. Nuclear family is a traditional family with two partners and children. That is the one that we all know and it is historically has been there for years. One that we know of the type of family is uh, the common law. Common law is when two people consider to live but not to be married but that is still called as a union. Third type is known as single parent, but it is only one parent, which is with children, and that is often on the that of a uh, nuclear family. We often see a lot. What is your definition of marriage? Comment on the on the comments below and let me know. And everyone this is Hanya Travels marriage education uh, informational video 2 and this is about history of marriage in in the society talk about marriage education part 2 I would like to discuss about my YouTube channel and blog Hanya Travels so Hanya Travels is a blog uh, that is it talks about the latest recipes and food trends and in um food, fashion, book, and travel, including videos as well, and including informational videos, and also my exclusive series, which I direct and film with uh, with my cousins called A Day With Cousins, featuring different cousins and their different skills. It's my exclusive series. 1250 to 13 CE, that is after, uh, the, the his, uh, they were uh, married, was uh was known uh, for hunters and gatherers now hunters and gatherers were like the aboriginal people at the time or like different tribes and the women would be the ones that gather the food and the gatherers would be the men so when is the the hunter and gatherers were the first one to start off with the the first uh historical marriage in there 11th century uh marriage was known to be for for social and economical purpose. So that means if there was a deal, if there was um, anything to do with uh, uh, with any economic uh, um, situation, marriage was the uh, was the reason for that. In 40 CE, marriage was formalized. So it was formalized into a, something that people will arrange, will talk, will celebrate so it'll be it was known for that 12th century marriage was uh was known to be um the common uh was known to be the common constitutional thing in um in the society so it was mostly from which side from the hunter gatherers to the to europe 53 was when marriage was uh, became a sacred 
ceremony. So sacred ceremony means that there's going to be people, there's going to be all kinds of things there. Two, marriage became a civil service. It became a civil service to offer to couples and to uh, couples of any age and anything, of any age group or any, whether it's old, new, to all couples. 50 to 1670, marriage became a constitution. So it became more like a uh, it became like a constitutional law and also became like an institute. That's where no, that's where you hear marriage is an institute. Nine, marriage became marriage was known to be marriage for life. So the the thinking of that is that once you marry, you're married. So that's what it means. Canadian society that historically um, that we know it uh, it started around World War One and Two. That's where there was um, there was like um, like women working, men working, and that's where there was a reason. Um, that that they need to be a spouse in there and also um, around later on um, as the years go by um, there was there was like more kids and there was only um, more kids and larger families and later on it became smaller families as we know and then um, around uh, 2000 to 90s it, uh, the common law was introduced in, for for marriage and later on as we know today you uh for 2020 you have options in marriage so what is for hanya travels um marriage education part two history and marriage so subscribe on the uh subscribe to hanya travels click on the subscribe button follow me on hanya travels uh, on instagram uh, read hanya travels and watch hanya travels thank you Everyone, this is Hanya Travels Marriage Education Informational Videos Part 3. This is about the mate selection theories. Started, I'd like to talk about Hanya Travels. So Hanya Travels is a blog and a YouTube channel uh, bringing you the latest and, and, and great uh, recipes, reviews, in a uh, food, fashion, style, and travel, including information videos and also my exclusive series called A Day with Cousins, which is filmed and directed by me. You might be wondering what is mate selection theories. So mate selection theories are theories which are used in uh, which are used in uh, in psychological and sociological terms to to analyze marriages and the process of marriages. Everyone has a different uh, mate selection theory. Uh, mate selection theory. So evolutionary mate selection theory is the one that goes that dates back all the way to hunters and gatherers. Like if you've seen my last video, you know what I'm talking about. And it goes on to that that mate selection is based on the features of men and women. That could be like their eyes, hair, maybe their shoulders. Things like that is mostly based on features. So that's how the person is selected. Mate theory is known as, um, known, is known to be popularly love at first sight concept. So ideal mate theory consists of, of uh, finding, of selecting a mate that has all the stuff that you, you wish to see or you want to see. And depending on that, that is how, that is what ideal mate theory is. The mental uh, mate selection theory is um, that if that you understand each other and um, you can relate to one another, and that's how you select your mate. So that's mate selection theory in developmental perspective. This, uh, in mate selection theory, feminist point of view would be is that. Um, is that there's an age difference between men and women, and uh, it's it's tend to be uh, more like a traditional family uh, way. Like uh, the men is supposed to be the dominant and per the dominant uh, part, and the women are supposed to be uh, just supposed to work or just supposed to be at home. That is feminist uh, mate selection theory.
exchange uh, mate theory goes into arranged marriage because it is through negotiation through a number of things that could be monetary uh whatever you name it so it is known as to be arranged marriage in this way okay the second theory that is used in a way that is known as supposed that is supposed to be on your own which is love marriage so that's where the ideal mate theory comes in which means it is by your choice you pick and you go according to what you see that is known as that's where ideal mate theory comes in love marriage Enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy learning about um, mate, mate selection theories. They're very important and something what I read throughout college, high school, and it's something that I like to share with everyone. So thank you. Subscribe to Hanya Travels. Click on the bell icon and subscribe to Hanya Travels as well as follow uh, Hanya Travels on Instagram and also um, also follow me at Hanya08 and my Instagram page Hanya, Tra Hanya Travels and also read Hanya Travels and uh, I look forward to having more videos for everyone. So thank you. Bye. And today uh, on Hanya Travels uh, Marriage Imp Educational Informational Videos Part 4 Social Trends in Marriage, I'll be talking about a lot of things that you might have not ever thought of. First thing you might be wondering, what is social trend in marriage? So social trend is a trend that is, uh, that is, that is the data collected from different uh, resources and focus groups. And that's what comes in social trend. Like let's say for age, for work, for marriage, all these things come in social trends. We don't notice it, but there are these trends that happen in, a, in every five or six years. Now, the first social trend and the first thing on the forecast of social trends in marriage will be 19.4% is traditional marriages in Canada that is that was last updated in 2011. And um, the rates are in the middle on that. They're not too high, they're not too much because there's changes to it depending on ethnicity and age. Second thing on the forecast for social trends in marriages is that 67% of marriages are are being done in institutes, in like uh in like religious places and in those kind of uh places. That was last updated in 2011. So you could see as the rate has gone up or down, it's up to you. You pick. Thing in the forecast for social trends in marriage is that. 17% of marriages are common law in Canada, which was found in 2011 due to a Census Canada report. On the social trends uh, in marriage forecast is that 70% of working women with kids ages from 30 to 59 are married. And, it, and as a uh, in 2005, there was a decrease in there as 2011 has an increase in it. As a fifth thing on the social trends in marriage forecast is that 12.5% of age population, that is the age difference from ages uh, 30 to 59, uh, has increased since 2011, according to a Census Canada report. forecast report on social trends in marriage be sure to research and see the social trends in marriage that's been occurring since 2011 or before or up till 2019 and see how this impacts the, the society in marriages hope you enjoyed uh watching this video hanya travels uh marriage education informational video part four social trends in marriage be sure to subscribe on the uh, be sure to subscribe to hanya travels and click on the bell icon also Watch Hanya Travels and also follow Hanya Travels Instagram page and follow Hanya, that's me on my account on Hanya08 for inquiries and also um, read Hanya Travels. So bye everyone.
Tanya Travels, Marriage Education Informational Video Part 5, Marriage in, in Digital Age. Marriage in Digital Age as part of Hanya Travels uh, Marriage Education Informational Videos. I like to talk a little bit about my blog and YouTube channel Hanya Travels. So Hanya Travels is a food uh, is a food fashion book and travel blog and a YouTube channel with the latest reviews, recipes, and informational videos, and including my exclusive video uh, exclusive video series A Day with a Cousin, which is filmed and directed by me, as all my videos are filmed and directed by me. Marriage in, um, why is marriage important in digital age? Now, as a person who's a young person like myself, because I'm 28, so a marriage in digital age is very important because when you get to know someone, it's all their social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all of these things. So in this, that also includes stuff like a relationship status when you when you first start, and then that eventually results in getting married, then you update your status on that. So that's what this is about. So this is why marriage in digital age is very important to know. Relationships on social media can sometimes be overlapping for couples. That could be with their mutual friends, liking, disliking, even their status from single to in relationship to married. So that could also be something, as it is stated in Psychology Today Canada. Um, 178 couples po uh, have stated their relationships on social media. That could be like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, LinkedIn, you name it. Media can be used to influence couple. That could be their couple. That could be their um, problems, misunderstanding, likes, dislike, that all comes in there in any form of social media, wherever you have your in relationship with, married to, and everything in there. One other thing to know is that according to Psychology Canada today, I, is that ages 18 to 29 are the first ones to put in on their status, on their status on social media, whether they're in a relationship, married, or or whatever so that's how it goes according to us uh, according to what it says that i cited on psychology canada hanya travels i hope you enjoyed uh learning about mar uh, marriage in digital age it's something that often people uh often want to know and often uh, they're just they they're aware of this but in an indirect way so i just thought i'd talk about it so thank you Watching Hanya Travels Marriage Informational Video Part 5 Marriage in Digital Age. S click on the bell icon and subscribe to Hanya Travels. And also uh, follow Hanya Travels Instagram page and follow me, Hanya, from Hanya Travels on Hanya08 for inquiries and also read Hanya Travels. Thank you. Tanya Travels, Marriage Education Informational Video, Part 6, Elements of Marriage. Started, I'd like to talk a little bit about my blog, Hanya Travels Blog and YouTube Channel. So Hanya Travels is a blog and YouTube channel which talks about the latest reviews and recipes, informational videos on food, fashion, book, and travel. To marriage there's 13 elements of marriage so these are the 13 elements of marriage that you should know one understanding love two respect three responsibility four disagreement does not mean disrespect five understanding six to set goals for your life seven to go all the way eight intimacy nine fidelity ten com uh, compromise 11 compri uh, compri compromise and 13 commitment. First element of marriage is to set goals for your life, for your age. So that means in each age you have different goals. Like at 20s, 
you're building a career, you want to, you're looking, you want to get married. That's one goal. When you're in your thirties, you want to have kids, you want to uh, get a new car. When you're in your fifties, you want to get a senior's home. So it's stuff like that. element of marriage is to go all uh, to to all quality of life so that means that the marriage should be the quality of life that you should enjoy you should have your time it should be balanced so the third element of marriage is commitment it is commitment because it's about how long are you going to be in a marriage or is it going to be long is it going to be short it's all about commitment element of marriage is to go all the way so to go all the way means is that you're willing to go you're willing to try and you're willing to see what happens in a marriage that could be trial and error like in let's say in um in location where you live or in something or it could be like um maybe uh like even littlest things like getting the the property for your kitchen so something like that i hope you enjoy learning about the elements of marriage and i hope you will enjoy my next video as well hanya travels subscribe to hanya travels click on the bell icon for uh, notifications and subscribe to hanya travels as well follow hanya travels on uh, instagram page and follow uh, my account hanya from hanya travels for inquiries at hanya08 Watch Hanya Travels, that's Hanya Travels YouTube channel, this one, and also read Hanya Travels. Thank you. This is Hanya Travels Marriage Education Informational Video Part 7, the last video of all the series, and this is about maintaining a marriage. I want to talk about my blog and YouTube channel, Hanya Travels. So Hanya Travels is a blog and YouTube channel with the latest reviews and recipes and informational videos and also reviews in um, food, fashion, book, and travel. Elements of maintaining a marriage. So I won't be talking about it, but I'll list uh, the seven elements of maintaining a marriage and you can Google and search that why are these important? So first is good communication. Second is mutual respect. Third is respect. Four is boundaries. Fifth is growth. Sixth is sport. And seven is fairness. Marriages, there's three types of relationships. There's traditional relationships, spiritual relationship, and complement relationship. Relationship while maintaining a marriage could be that you have shared interests, but you have the I factor in there. So that is not a good thing. Is a spiritual relationship, which means you do everything intellectually and spiritually, and there's still the I factor. So that is not good either. And relationship that is um, shared interests don't matter. You have the V factor, and you're always willing to learn and grow. This is all what you need to know about maintaining a marriage. Hope you enjoyed this video. So click on the bell icon and subscribe to Hanya Travels. And also follow Hanya Travels Instagram page. And also follow me, Hanya from Hanya Travels, on Instagram for inquiries, Hanya08, if there's any reviews you want. And also read Hanya Travels and watch Hanya Travels. Thank you.